is that uh, it shows something that uh, a lot of people are asking me about usually when we give this kind of lecture and the thing is that most of the time uh, when I give a lecture about games some for the audience comes and asks me how do we balance distribution uh, versus quality for some, for some reason people think that uh, if you invest in uh, getting your game discovered and if you gain, uh, invest in getting your game promoted it means that you also invest, invest less in the game itself and the thing is that most of the time it's not distribution versus quality it's distribution versus monetization because because the quality has to be high anyway the thing is that you have to really uh, carefully choose where you want to invest is it the early stages of the game uh, where you get most of the users uh, you know most of the 50 percent of users will not exceed level 10. so you really want to invest in those 10 levels but if you want to monetize the users you have to go for the uh, five percent uh, of the population uh, that is going to pay and out of which only even a lesser percent of people that are paying uh, the big bucks so you have to go to the to the 15th and to the 20th level and invest there and also you go to you have to go to the store and then some items and invest items that most of the people are not going even to see but these kind of items are really, are really a good driving force for uh, helping you to monetize and actually make money out of in-app purchases. All right. So, so actually, what what you see here is uh, how you have to uh, balance your currency in the game. Now, what we did uh, in the beginning when we started to distribute the game is that we, in the beginning, we gave a very small portion of the currency to the users and as they went along in the game and progress over time, we, we, we started to give them more and more uh, coins and kind, uh, you know, and portion of the currency. And the thing is that what happened is that for those who came to the game in the beginning, they had a very bad experience, but those who actually stick and started to play the more advanced levels, they had the better experience, but then they also didn't have any incentive in spending uh, actual money and buying coins because at that point of time, they already have big amount of uh, coins that they could spend and the thing is that you as you see in the graph you have to do it exactly the opposite uh, way so what you want to do is give some coins let the user experiment go to the store buy a few stuff and then gradually decrease the amount of coins you give them so as to become addicted they will have to buy more coins in order to satisfy their, their um, um, well let's say new casual um, habit. So um, just keep, have this uh, graph in mind when you create your new game. I mean, this is something that looks very simple, but as I said before, many of the stuff sound very trivial, but you have to really carefully uh, follow all the, these guidelines. So social, everybody is talking about social lately, and sometimes we, I mean, even in inside Moominis, we don't really, uh, well, we can't really put our finger of what social means. Um, but the thing is that social can really improve your game monetization and distribution, and there are a couple of ways of doing that. Um, what the the thing that you have to keep in mind is that you always have to put the player in the center of the of things. So you have to think about what is the interest of the player to share stuff. What I mean, why would they like to use Facebook Connect and uh, give you their information and their access to the wall? And there are a few things you can give them using the, the Mumini Studio. I mean, we have some social features and we, we're going to have much more in the future. So when you ask someone to use uh, Facebook Connect, you have to tell him why. And giving them, them coins is not good enough because they're not going to understand why you want them why you want to give them coins for them to use Facebook Connect unless there's something in it for them. Um, so obviously the first thing uh, you can offer them is to share something on their wall, which might be inviting and might not. I mean it really depends on the content. And um, for instance, what we do in the next game that you will see screenshots from in the next few slides, we use very funny um, sentences about unicorns. Hopefully, that will drive them to share the, the sentence if they really can rely to the sentence. 
uh, additional thing can be receive updates. If you have if you have users that are engaged and they like your content, receiving updates is something that they can actually look for. So using Facebook Connect in order for you to get the email, their email and be able to send them updates about what's going on in your game is a good incentive. And obviously saving stats, how users they play the use playscape. So going forward. As we go from one device to the other, the all the states in Playscape across all the games will be saved. So you can tell them, hey, listen up. If you know if you can use Facebook Connect, you can also move from one device to the other, um, and you're still going to have all the progress saved in all the stages in all of the games. So this is also something uh, that you can do. The thing is that it's it has to be both your interest and theirs. I would like to add a few words about this. I mean, I think that social is one of the most exciting uh, um, opportunities uh, that are open to developers today. Um, I think that unlike the uh, way the the web ecosystem, which is already very saturated with a lot of <clears throat> really optimized attempts to use social to advance games and applications, the mobile ecosystem is still just waiting. Uh, for new exciting ideas. So I would suggest, you know, being really creative and looking around, keeping your ears open to seeing new things coming out. Because as you will see, uh, and you hear in the report, some of the big players on <clears throat> mobile and they take advantage of social are actually the big web players. And so far, they've pretty much been cloning what they do on web, not as well. So, I mean, I... Personally, I mean, I think we think in Mominis that there's a very, very big potential here to get um, a lot of users for free in a way, to get a lot of free retention. Uh, very similar to the way that it was, you know, when uh, Farmville was just starting out, just at the very, very beginning. So, I mean, I think this is a very interesting uh, market for you to check. Okay, customer relations. Uh, this is something that really goes in line with the social. I mean, the main goal basically is to get your players to play more in a higher frequency and to be more engaged into the game. And there are a few ways you can do that. Uh, the thing, the first thing, the thing you have to keep in mind is you have to, you want to have some kind of customer relation management system inside your game. You want to be able to chat with your users and offer them uh, uh, things that going that are, that uh, goes around in your game. Uh, so basically, if there is a special event or sale uh, in your game, you want to be able to let them know. Uh, it can be through the mobile device, device itself, and it can be also via email. It really depends on how you want and how you can communicate with your users. Uh, and that also brings me back to the uh, previous slide about monetization. And Sach, maybe you can say something about uh, how a special event can drive monetization. Yeah, I think that one of the interesting things uh, that you will learn is that um, a lot of the sales in many of the most successful applications out there actually do not, I mean, similar to the misconception of, of people thinking that everybody spends 50 cents or a dollar <clears throat> instead of spending a lot of money, uh, people are also not aware that very similar to regular stores, a lot of the purchases made in applications and games are actually taking place when there are big special events, big sales, <clears throat> okay, so if you have a, a weekend where you go half price and you let everybody know or you have something themed, all of those kind of uh, interactions with the user actually get him a lot more engaged and can increase your sales. Uh, we've, we've heard of cases where um, some applications actually make um, around 50% of their sales uh, through a discounted time. So it's actually very, very powerful to use uh, within your application. Branding, also one of my uh, favorite parts in the game. Um, the thing about branding is that it, com it is composed of so many things. You have the main character in the game, the storyline, and also the progression, the movie, the text in the game, the icon of the game. Everything uh, uh, is involved when you do your branding of the game. And the thing is that you have to really keep in mind that it's important to do it from the get-go because if you don't have a branding kind of a view of the game before you start, it's really hard to put it in the game as you go along. And the more features and the more graphics you have in the game, 
it's going to get harder and harder. So it's really important that once you have the core gameplay and once you have the main character, to think about the, go, the things that go beyond uh, the character itself. And so going back to uh, Ninja Chicken, Ninja Chicken is a really big example because A, it was successful, and B, it still, it, it, it still makes me funny. It makes, it makes, me, it makes me laugh every, every time that I think about the game. So Ninja Chicken is a side-scroller game. And the, the thing about side-scroller games is that, uh, that you see ninjas in these kind of games all the time. I mean, I played a thing in my lifetime, uh, at least 20 ninja-oriented uh, games uh, that uh, are based on a side-scroller game mechanics. And what uh, the idea behind Ninja Chicken was to create something that will surprise you. And uh, so instead of a ninja, we still use the ninja, but the ninja was a chicken. And the chicken in the beginning, as you see here in the storyboard, uh, ran into, uh, it's, I don't know, a laundry or something like that. And then it get it, it really, it, yeah, it, it has in a, it, it really gets hurt. And then in the end of the storyboard, it thinks he's a, he's a ninja. And then in the second, uh, uh, in the sequel of the game, it goes into the jungle and you don't really know whether it's everything he it sees is a missionary or it's something that actually goes on in real life. And this fine line between the imaginary and the real life is something that goes uh, into the game, into the features. Uh, there are the portals in the Ooga Booga gameplay, and there's the do the dog, and everything is kind of uh, uh, Alice in the Wonderlands uh, kind of a thing. Um, another game that is not launched yet is called the uh, Unicorn Sugar Rush. And it's about the sales you see here. And the game starts with a sentence saying, uh, always be yourself. Unless you can be a unicorn. And then you see, you know, the butt of a funny unicorn eating candies. And obviously it has more candies than you. Than you. And then you can, the camera goes back to the unicorn, to the seal in the beginning of the stage. And then it's, and then always be unicorn. This is a sentence that you saw uh, running uh, in Facebook a lot of times. The thing is that the idea here in the game is to take something that guys can relate to, which is unicorn, something magical, power up, superpowers, things that kids really like, but then also take a character that is really cute and put them together so we can appeal both uh, for the uh, women audience, for the female audience, and to the male audience. And also still keeping it funny and very amusing and surprising all together. So we don't know if the game is going to be successful yet, but we do have our hopes up. Uh, by the way, if you have any feedback, you can write it down in the chat window. Uh, we'll be able to, re we'll be happy to receive that. Um, so once we created this storyboard, we started thinking about the power-ups. So all the power-ups we had in the game were related to this unicorn theme. Uh, we didn't create just, you know, obviously the, the silly, the, uh, cookies and uh, and uh, candies and stuff like that, but also in addition to that, we really wanted to, wanted to keep the branding uh, um, in a coherent way, coherent way that goes from the storyboard into all the features in the game. <clears throat> and the last bullet in this presentation is about Playscape and uh, Playscape uh, integration is really important if you're creating games using the Mumini Studio. So basically, Playscape offers you a gamified cost promotion. And cost promotion is a very traditional marketing method. Uh, just think of, usually you have one product with a, a promoting a related product. So think about Martha Stewart's uh, cookbooks promoted in Martha Stewart's show. Um, so in mobile, usually cost promotion refers to one game promoting another game of the same publisher. And to put things in, in perspective, we have reached a target audience of 30 million users based on a marketing plan that uses only cross promotion with a zero marketing spend on advertisements. Uh, so we created this Playscape, which is a mega game that offers you a rewarding system, transferable, transferable goods, virtual coins, and experience points that you can use across different games and the user is incentivized to go from one game to the other while still staying in the same experience. And 
So this is basically the gamified cross promotion. And Sach, maybe you can tell us a little bit about what we see here. Yeah, so just, just to take you through a little bit of the features in Playscape, uh, the idea here is, uh, and as Eyal said, is to make it gamified. I mean, everyone can put a banner, everybody can say, hey, I have another game. But the trick is to actually get your user uh, you know, excited and feeling that they're still within some kind of game. Right? They didn't leave the game, they're still experiencing the same kind of fun experience, just going to a different game. So what we actually see here is uh, what we call uh, a mission wall, and that's a place where a user can see all the different challenges across different games uh, that they finished, that they can go ahead and use. That's the thing you see uh, right at the top. And at the bottom, what you see uh, is a toolbar of shared elements. Uh, we have your currency, your accumulated currency, and you have your experience points uh, and level. And these things go with you across different games. So the user actually sees these things uh, everywhere it goes, uh, what we call the end-to-end -end experience. Uh, and that means that you have the same kind of, of UI, the same kind of message that you get when you're in the game. Right? You, you know that you're completing missions, you know that you have those kind of coin system that you see everywhere. And as you get it, you actually go back to Playscape and you see the same kind of terminology, you see the same kind of icons, the same language, and the same graphical language, and it goes with you from game to game. And, 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 that's, and that's the most important part here, you know, to reduce the, to reduce the friction and to get the same seamless kind of experience to the user. And what was surprising to also see about Playscape is that not only it has created the great distribution for all of our games, but also users that play Playscape play longer in a higher frequency and the rate Playscape higher than most of the games it contains, which is currently 4.7 Google Play. That's an extremely high rating. And the thing that I think uh, it, it uh, happens mainly because we are not intruding the users and bombarding them with advertisement, but we keep everything as part as, uh, of the um, overall experience. And this is actually what guides us through everything that we do, putting the users in the center, because you can create all of these guidelines and rules that you want, but if the experience is not good, it's not going to work. So we went over to these guidelines and you know you saw that all the things that uh, needs to be done that need uh, to be done when you want to create a good game and think about what is required from the developer uh, in order to achieve that i mean there are so many qualities that you have to have in order to create a high quality game it sometimes it is mind boggling so <clears throat> a few uh, years ago i met uh, Semin Vobno, uh, who is the creator of one of my favorite games a cut the rope in a conference in Hamburg. And I asked him, actually, one of the main things that they came to me was that it was not, it was really clear that he didn't start creating a game, the game, you know, to become successful. Um, he actually told me that he was blown away by the success of, the game, of his game. And when I asked him uh, what drives him and motivates him, he told me that the, big, the biggest motivation for him is the opportunity to create a small world and let players step into it. Now, you have to remember that success is always and only the result. It's never how or why good games are created. And uh, developers like Samuel are those developers who create games that we all love and want to play. The developers that create games because it's their passion, their form of love, their form of art, and their uh, great love form. And these are the, also the type of games that make it to the 1%. And so in Mominis, we have different partnerships and different uh, campaigns to help developers get there. And most recently, we have a contest called Gamecast Contest 2012. And so you're all welcome to go to the website and check the contest out. Uh, the next stage of the contest is December 24th. Uh, all you have to do in this date is to submit your uh, rough draft, which is the concept of the game. So it can be a video of you talking about a game, it can be a storyboard, it can be some sketches that you have. You have to submit something that we know that you are on board. Um, and as you can see, the prize packet is quite big. 
the idea behind it is to give uh, the developer enough, um, let's say, resources to uh, establish his own studio and to create a long-term relationship between him and Muminis. Um, that's basically it. If you have some questions, that's the right time to ask them. You can use, uh, again, the windows, of the, the chat window on the right-hand side of the, the screen. And just wait for a moment to give you some time to write down your questions. Um, and that's basically it. So <clears throat> one of the questions you see here is uh, what kind of partnerships you have in Mominis. Um, <clears throat> so basically, in Mominis, we provide four main things for developers. The first one is marketing, obviously, and um, getting your game discovered. The second one is funding for a game. And you can do it uh, through the contest or just uh, um, contact us using the email we provide right here in the chat in a, in a few moments. And, and the third thing is uh, what we call uh, risk mitigation. Basically, we provide all the infrastructure you need in order to, for you to create your game. So it can be everything from the trademarking uh, to the legal stuff that you have behind your game and making sure that you have everything in place uh, before you do any of you know those mistakes we have done before and regret them now. So. Uh, obviously, the, the idea is to supply with all the knowledge, all knowledge that you need. And the fourth uh, thing, it's you know that's the last but not least, uh, data analysis. Um, everything about the game is very, let's say, performance driven. So for us, the launch of a game is only the beginning, uh, and we uh, we don't only drive traffic to the for the game, but we also provide feedback for the developers about what needs to be optimized and how you can optimize the goals and the revenue distribution of the game. And that's very important uh, in the online world because, as you can know, the online world is a call to action world. And you want more people to do stuff in your game and you have to, you have to know what they're doing. Um, so that was the first question. Um, let's see the second one. Okay, um, we have a few questions. The first one is uh, how you can make an online game. How do you add the Facebook Connect? How do you find more characters uh, to the game? Um, so all the games, I'm sure that you know that. I mean, I'm just trying to figure out uh, what uh, what it means. Uh, I, th I think uh, the, the question is how you create game. I, I, I hope that you all know that you can create a game using the Momini Studio. So all you have to go is to do is to go to the website and download the tool. It's free, and um, at least for you know we, relatively to other tools, it's very easy to use. Uh, we provide those webinars uh, on a um, weekly basis, um, getting started, and also uh, webinars for the more advanced developers of you between you, uh, among you, and. Uh, that's the way it goes. Now, the studio is a game creation tool, so the graphics is something that you have to add by yourself. You need to have to be a graphic designer by yourself or just to find someone um, that can work with you. Um, if you're looking for a graphic designer, you can always go to the forum section in the contest page and in the contest website and say that you're looking for one. And we can help you out uh, in finding a graphic designer, or you can you know, someone can just come, come across the, one of your phone posts and uh, offer their help by themselves. Actually, in the last contest, uh, the few, the last few contests that, that we had in Mominis, um, a lot of developers and graphic designers um, met each other in our forum. So that that is actually an efficient way of getting to know other professionals in your field. Looking for the next question.
Okay, what will be the theme for the next webinar? <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. All the webinars, uh, you can find them in the website, in our website. Um, so maybe um, if we just help you out right here. So we go to game contest and I can read you the, the name of the next webinar. Um, in any case, I can promise you that we will let you know via email since you have your email now. <laughs> So, okay, so if you, if you go to Gamecast Contest website, there on the right hand side, there's a button you can push that takes you to the next webinar that we have. Um, the next one is about cost promotion and how we create this magic in Mominis, how we get to those, uh, to this volume of uh, downloads. Um, and before that, on the November 12th, we have another webinar of getting started. So if you're looking for, you know, the guidance for the first few steps that yeah, you have to take when using the Momini Studio, our development tool, um, you can just uh, attend this webinar. Then we have a webinar about cost promotion, which is the marketing aspect of what we do here in Mominis. And then going forward to the more advanced stages of the, of the contest, we also provide webinars for the more, more advanced features uh, in Mominis. Um, and for those of you who want to create graphics and can't do it right now, can don't have the expertise yet and want to know about how you can create good graphics for mobile games, you can also go to uh, the graphics webinar that one of our leading uh, graphic designers is going to uh, conduct. So there is another question about why most of our games are intended for the female audience. Um, and I mean, I, I hate answering a question by giving another question, but um, I would like to know if most of you think that our games are intended for women, because in our, uh, according to our data, um, the, you know, 50% of our players are men, uh, are male. Male. So the, th the thing is that um, this is something that really goes into what Sach said before about you know developers wanting to create a, you know full-fledged game 3D millions and millions of stages and you have to keep in mind that you are not creating a game for a specific market. We are really trying to eat the masses. So the thing is, it has to be for women. It has to be for men. It has to be for children. Uh, it kind in a way it really reminds me of Disney films that are for the for the entire family. Um, so this is what we are trying to achieve, and also according to our data, this is also what we are achieving. But I have to say that I'm not really surprised that uh, this question came up. I mean, my, many of my friends they asked me the same question. They said, you know, well, your games are for children, your games are for kids, your ga games are for uh, women, and uh, people. It's not <laughs> they're not. I'm uh, sorry to disappoint you, but everybody like this kind of game. Yeah, I will just add it, and again stress that uh, this is a combination of, of, of two things. Uh, this is a combination of um, the freemium business model, which is really based on attracting a lot of users uh, as, as the best way to monetize in order to get the interesting and relevant um, industry and relevant audience, uh, combined with the fact that uh, in the world of the app stores, um, and, and which is the way that mobile games are distributed, going for the mass audience, you know, including both men and women, uh, that's pretty much the only way to get uh, mass exposure. I mean, there are some cases that you will see uh, a different kind of game, which is more targeted for a small segment, uh, appearing at the top of the charts. But in most cases, I would have to bet that when that happens, um, there was a very big marketing budget behind that. Um, so it is possible. It is another strategy. There are some companies that do that uh, and create those kind of full-fledged, you know, more segmented based on users that will pay very large sums. But these are usually backed by, you know, very deep pockets. Uh, these are very high risk. I mean, you, you really have to uh, measure ROI, right? You put a lot of marketing uh, dollars into promoting the game. And if you don't see it coming back, then you're at a big loss. That's something that happens to a lot of uh, a lot of the big developers and publishers. 
Now, in our view, the most, the more efficient, the better way, the thing that leverages uh, the structure of the App Store and mobile better is going mass. Uh, as you know, there is no special category <clears throat> uh, for ranking only for mail. Even if you go at arcade, for example, as a category, you, you know, you would think, okay, sounds kind of, uh, you know, mail, arcade and action. But arcade and action is actually, on Android, is the most popular category for games. And you would find all, kind of game, all kinds of games there. Everything is arcade today, uh, even the most feminine kind of games. So there is no real way to escape this. You must always, always... Uh, try to go for uh, all of the users. I hope that answers the question as well. Okay, just a few uh, more questions and we're done. Um, so about the webinar, someone ask, asks here if uh, this webinar will be available to download or available online. Um, so part of it, part of this webinar is going to be online. We're not going to put, to put the entire things, the, the entire webinar online, but uh, we put it on the website. Uh, again, if you go to the website, you can see that uh, you can see on the left hand side the list of the upcoming webinars and also the, some of the. We're going to also upload some of the previous uh, webinars so everybody can watch and uh, also fill the gap of what, what they've missed. Um, but in any case, uh, we are going also to broadcast another um, webinar just like that in a couple of weeks. So just you know, go to the itinerary and see what we have in store. Um, another question is about Playscape. Um, and uh, it's about whether uh, it can it supports chat between players uh, and score comparison. And I think since this uh, this question is more it goes to the to the world map of Playscape, I think Tsar can also answer this one. Yeah well um... The way that Playscape is built as a product is that we go where the users want us to go. Um, so we always have an open, uh, an open discussion uh, with our players and with our developers. The players usually they vote with their hands, you know, with the way they play, with the way they respond. Uh, you know, when we see new competitive elements like that, you know, people they, they respond very well to that. We add those features, and of course our developers that are requesting those. Uh, obviously, this is not something new. Uh, so I I cannot really disclose exactly when, but I must I can hint pretty directly that these kind of things are in the works. And the nice thing about the way that we work, because we are, um, you know, more of like a, a publisher with the technology, uh, it means that the games that are developed today on the platform will automatically take advantage of those features when they are available. Um, so, I mean, obviously to compare scores, you would have to somehow submit the score from within the game, but the integration will be trivial once it's available. So, I mean, these, uh, you know, chat and score comparison, uh, these are great features and these are going to be in, but that's just the beginning. I mean, we're planning a lot more exciting things, uh, which will take advantage of this ecosystem. So, you know, you should be expecting a lot of interesting stuff. Thank you. Okay. So, uh... We are just about out of, out of time. We have to wrap things up. Um, just a couple of more notice, uh, notices. We have a game connection in the end of the month in Paris, and we are going to be there. So if you want uh, to meet us and you are there, uh, you are more than welcome to uh, drop us an email. And also, we are going to attend Flash Gun in the beginning of December. So um, also, if you are in the area, if you're from Kiev, the Ukraine, Russia, um, Eastern Europe in general, uh, please come and meet us. We'll be there, full presence. And again, thank you all for coming. And hope to see you in the next webinar. Thank you, guys.